Hello everyone, my name is Denise. This morning I'll be talking about the two witnesses of Revelation 11. But before I do so, I'd like to explain to you some of the different ways that I hear from the Lord. And the reason I'll be doing this is because many times I hear prophets or prophetic people would come and they would say that I've heard from the Lord. And I myself would wonder, how did this person hear from the Lord? Was it through a dream, a vision? How did they hear? And so for this reason, I'll be explaining to you also to help anyone who may be interested in the prophetic and how it works. Okay, I hear from the Lord audibly, just as I'm speaking now and you can hear me. This is one of the ways that I hear from the Lord. I also hear through dreams and visions. There are also times when I would have a download of information where I would know everything that happened as if I was there when the events took place. Okay, those are some of the ways that I hear from the Lord. Right, as I've said, I'll be talking about the two witnesses of Revelation 11 and I'll get straight into the reading so you can get an understanding of what I'm about to say afterwards. Okay, Revelation 11 from 3 to 13 and it follows. And I will give power unto my two witnesses and they will prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sockcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devour their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven. All that these have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascend out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And their bodies, their dead bodies, shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people and kindred and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and half and shall not suffer their bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth and after three days and an hour the spirit of life from God entered into them and they stood up on their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them come ether and they ascended up to heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them. And the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell. And in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to God of heaven. Amen. Okay. These two witnesses that I just read about in Revelation 11. On the 31st of August 2019, the Lord spoke to me audibly about the two witnesses that they will be martyrs for Christ. 
Then again on the 13th of August 2020, the Lord spoke to me about the two witnesses that he will be sending out. Again on the 13th of November 2020, the Lord began to reveal the mysteries of the prophecy of the prophecies of the two witnesses and he said there will be one coming such as Moses that he calls Moses that will come in the spirit and power of Elijah the prophet so I will read that again the Lord is saying there will be one coming such as Moses that he, the Lord, calls Moses, that will come in the spirit and power of Elijah, the prophet. So the Lord is saying there will be one coming, but it will be as if there were two, because this witness will come in the spirit and power of Elijah, the prophet. Elijah will be there in spirit and power but there will only be one witness, one prophet, one anointed one. It doesn't mean that whoever teaches or prophesy on the two witnesses coming is incorrect. It doesn't mean that they're incorrect because the scripture talks about the two witnesses that will be coming. The scripture talks of two witnesses coming but the Lord is revealing to me a deeper revelation, a deeper understanding of these two witnesses and the form that they will come in. So when the Bible is referring to two witnesses coming, there will not be two physical witnesses coming, but there will be one coming in the power and spirit of Elijah, the prophet. Hallelujah. Okay, I will read um, Zechariah 4 from 11 to 14. It follows, Then answered I and said unto him, What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? And I answered and said unto him, What be these two olive branches which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves. And he answered me and said, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then said he, These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole, whole earth. This witness is already here on earth. So the witness will not be descending from above as some people speculated. The witness is here on earth already waiting to take its position. John the Baptist came in the spirit and power of Elijah the prophet to prepare the hearts of the people for the Messiah's first coming this is found in Luke 1 verse 17. And this witness will come to do the same, to prepare the hearts of the people for the second coming of the Messiah. In Malachi 4 verse 5 to 6, it says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. Least I come and strike the earth with a curse. I have heard many speculations about who the two witnesses could be. And some say it's Enoch, it will be Enoch and Elijah. Some say it will be God, it's the New Testament and the Old Testament. Some say it will be two men and the speculation goes on. Many people are not sure of what exactly or who these 
witnesses will be. But there are, are a lot of speculation around this. I myself was speculating about these two witnesses and I thought they were two physical people until the Lord spoke to me and I was surprised to say the least because I thought there were two people. But the Lord is saying there will be one coming as if there were two in the spirit and power of Elijah. And we can see, you know, in, in the scripture, it talks about in the scripture, I think it's Samuel in first Samuel, it talks about, you know, the people of Israel was not pleasing to God because um, Ophni and Phineas, Elias son, Ophni and Phineas did evil in the sight of the Lord and the Lord sent destruction on them and they died, Ophni and Phineas died and the Israelites were defeated because of their sin. They were defeated and so they defeated them and took the Ark of the Covenant away. And they had the Ark of the Covenant, the Philistine had the Ark of the Covenant in their temple or their worship place with their God, among their God. And when they returned, they saw their God on the floor, on the face. And every time they put up their God, they would find the God on their face. Until the last time they got the head was broken off. It fell and the head was broken off and the feet were broken off. Only leaving the trunk of the, the you know, the idol, the, their God. And so the people cried, the Philistine cry, cried that, you know, they should remove the Ark of the Covenant before it destroys them. Because the Ark of the Covenant represented the presence of God. And so it was as if God himself was there. And so will Elijah the prophet, so will he come in this, the power and the spirit to assist this witness. And so it's as if Elijah himself is there. This is what the Lord is revealing to me. It's as if Elijah himself is there hallelujah right the lord is saying this witness will surprise the world the lord is saying this witness will surprise the world this witness could be a man it could be a woman the people will be confused and they will be confounded as they were in the time of jesus because they have their own expectation of what this witness or witnesses should be and what they will be i know this will not be for everyone what i'm saying will not be for everyone and cannot and will not be received by everyone you know just as they did not receive jesus because he was not what they he did not come in the form of how they expected him to come Instead, he, he did not descend from above and he was born in a manger amongst animals. And so, so will this witness who will come to prepare the way of the Lord's return. This witness will not be according to their expectations. And so they will not receive this witness and so this is why the Lord wants me to come and to share this with the people. As I said, many will not receive it, but it's okay for those who will receive the word of the Lord. That's fine. And I know because, you know, when I prepare this word, also I must say, when I prepare this word, I know that the enemy does not want me to reveal what the Lord is saying. Because all hell break loose in the spirit realm with these, you know, demonic entities. You know, in the kingdom of darkness, all hell break loose after I've prepared this word. The enemy does not want the word of God to go forth. Because the enemy do not want when this witness, this anointed one, 
this prophet comes that the enemy does not want this prophet to be received because they, the prophet will not come in the form as they expected it. The people will be expecting two to appear and then they will see one in person. And so they will say that this is not the witness that is to come. And so this witness will not be received because it's not how they interpreted what the Bible is saying. But there's always a, a deeper revelation to the word of God. And so the Lord wants me to reveal this, you know, to prepare the people. So when this witness comes, that you will know that this is the witness that was sent from God. Okay, these are my few words for today. But before I go, I would like to say if there's anyone who don't know Jesus as their personal savior, to do so before it's too late. Tomorrow is not promised to any man and we could die in our sins at any time. And so I want to encourage you to seek the Lord before it's too late. Tomorrow is not promised to you. You know, what will it profit you to gain the old world and lose your soul? Also, there are those who were once with Christ, but they've now turned away from the faith. I'm encouraging you to receive the Lord before it's too late. Receive the Lord now. Turn to him before it's too late for you. There are also those who are still professing the faith, but they are lukewarm. Their lifestyle does not reflect Christ at all. I'm encouraging you to turn to the Lord, to repent and to turn to the Lord before it's too late. Thank you for listening. Take care. God bless you. Bye bye.